Very warm welcome to you to St James Church in Rawcliffe. I'm not there this week because of complications of getting there at the right time when the weather was in the right conditions. I'm just here in my garden. But our service normally comes from there and many of the images uh, speak from that church. Uh, as you will all know, I hope, our churches are now open for private prayer at a few times each week. If you want to find out about those, the information is in notices around the villages and also on the social media, the web pages and other places. So please do uh, look for that and do make use of that. We're going to review what's happening with that in a couple of weeks' time and at the same time we're going to plan for how we reopen our churches for uh, public worship and what the steps are and what are the things we do uh, to enable that to happen should be. Uh, so uh, look forward to that and do keep your eyes open for that. If you've got any ideas, feed them to PCC members and pray for us as we think about the best way to so safely and well develop our worship and our church life uh, over the next few months. We're going to start by the, with our opening acclamation. Together we say, you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains, the hills shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Come and worship. Amen. On a day such as today, Jesus met with his disciples up a mountain, sitting by a lake, followed by crowds, and in a quiet place where they could be alone. Today we meet as disciples of Jesus, sitting here, part of a crowd across the world, in a place where we can meet and learn of you, eager to hear your word, O Lord. Speak to us through your word. Teach us, challenge us and inspire us, so that we might draw closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is Come, let us join our cheerful songs. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. We join together in prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things 
that we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life, in the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for the Fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I, propose, which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from this power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your minds leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind lead to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives your life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life to the mortal bodies by his same spirit living within you. Our second hymn is 
Teach me my God and King. from Mark chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day Jesus left the house and sat by the wayside. But such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, he said, anyone who has ears. You therefore are to hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the man who received the seed at the edge of the path. The one who received it on patches of rock is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy. But he has no root in him. He does not last. Let some trial come, or some persecution on account of the word, and he falls away at once. The one who received the seed in thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries of this world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so he produces nothing. And the one who received the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He is the one who yields a harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. And this is the gospel of the Lord. So let's just ask God to help us as we think through uh, those readings that we've had. Dear Lord, we ask that you will speak to us and help us to learn from what you teach. In Jesus' name. Amen. Here's our veg patch, and in the story, uh, the sower is used as an example of spirituality. And Jesus, when he's talking to the people, often uses physical examples to talk about spiritual realities. And they can be very helpful, they can help us to understand things. But also, 
uh, you can get led astray and get into a parable and find that uh, it takes you somewhere where you really don't need to go. For example, this parable of the sower, Jesus talks about the seed ending up in the right place, as if the seed has a power to choose where it goes for itself, which of course it doesn't. It's the farmer who puts the seed out, and when we put this seed out, we tried to get nice rows of carrots, and we actually had the rocket on a, a tape. I've never done that before. I'm not really very good at gardening anyhow. Uh, and it's all ended up in a very nice straight line because those seeds went in where we wanted them to go. And you can't take a parable and do everything with it that relates. You've got to just pick it up and say, what's the important points? What are the things Jesus was trying to say that are matter? And in this parable, he has a number of things to say about being good seed, seed that produces good fruit. The first thing Jesus talks about is seed that's planted on the path. And he said, it's never going to get roots. If you're planted on the path, you're not going to get anywhere. You can hear something, and you might even think it's brilliant. You might actually have the kernel of something really important, something that's got great potential, but it just dies. And sometimes that happens to us, doesn't it? We hear something and we think, yeah, no, that's really great. And we just do nothing with it. Then he talks about feed seeds in shallow soil. And he says that actually they grow really quickly. Um, when we first planted in here, uh, this nothing came up. There weren't any weeds or anything. It was just soil for quite a few days, even weeks, before things began to pop up, just as those little two uh, seeds that are two leaves at the top of the first bit of the plant and now we're beginning to get things that are really growing which hopefully we're going to eat but if you plant things in shallower soil Jesus says it grows quickly I don't know but I think it probably does and sometimes uh, people kind of hear something and think that's brilliant and they throw themselves at it as if it's really the thing that they're committed to and then they kind of lose interest and drift off. And Jesus says that's not the way to be. Uh, and then he talks about the plants which, he then talks about plants which have ended up in, Jesus goes on to talk about plants which have ended up in amongst the weeds. Again, when we were planting, we tried to make that not happen. Uh, but you can see that when a sower was sown like that, it can end up amongst weeds. And certainly, uh, we didn't plant any weeds here, but there are plenty growing. Uh, and you can end up amongst the weeds, and the weeds start taking out all the good things. And what I have to do is come here, and I haven't done it uh, much recently, and take out the weeds so that it's just the good soil is kept and the good things are growing where we want the good things to grow. But Jesus says what happens to some people is that they're growing perfectly well, but then other things around about start taking over. The interests that they have seem to be more important than becoming the right kind of person. The things that they love in this world stop them from becoming somebody who cares about others. And maybe they find that they're pulled about by all sorts of things. He says, we well, need to be careful about that. You need to be careful that you don't end up with things that aren't really good for you taking over. And it's very easy for all of us to end up with that kind of situation. So we need to be careful that we don't get like that. And then finally, Jesus talks amongst the seeds that fall on fertile soil. And when it comes into fertile soil, then you can get real growth. And uh, I was in a barley field earlier today, or the edge of a barley field, looking at the seeds. Uh, and I was showing a barley plant. I may show it uh, in this film. And if you look at a barley plant, just the one seed can produce a hundredfold what it started with. 
because it's in good ground and I know that that barley field has been well looked after. And I know that this ground that we've planted ours in, our vegetables in, is pretty good ground now. When we started, it was pretty rubbish ground. And we dug it all out, and you can see that from these pictures. We went down two spades depth, we dug up loads of clay, we kept the topsoil, we put loads of compost into the soil, and we re-filled in our holes. And so hopefully we've got two foot of good soil in here, which we're waiting to see how it grows, but at the moment things are growing on it. <coughs> and I'm about to put some fleece over it to try and protect it and uh, hopefully soon we're going to have <coughs> our first crops and we had to put some real hard work to make sure that soil was right and Jesus when he says you just land in good soil actually <coughs> when Jesus says you just land in good soil I don't think he was really trying to say that what he was trying to say is actually you need to find good soil you need to root yourself in the important things <coughs> Jesus, when he says the seeds fall into good soil, actually is trying to draw out not just that the seeds fall there, but how important being rooted in the right things are. And he's using the analogy of good soil as a way of saying, get yourself into good soil. Of course, seeds can't do that, but we can. We can get ourselves into the things that help us. We can get ourselves into a a strong and regular prayer life. We can get ourselves into reading the Bible. We can get ourselves into worship and getting close to God. We can get ourselves into acting out and living out the Christian faith in a way that is transformative for others, but is also transformative for ourselves. And if we do those things, then we are rooted in the depths of what God wants. If we do those regularly, if we do those steadily, then those things grow and they don't just shoot up and rush away, but they continue. We need discipline. We need determination. We need to grow in compassion and care. We need to grow in love. We need to work out how to do that. You don't just suddenly learn how to love the poor and the needy. You learn to love them by going out and finding them, and finding ways of touching them, and discovering how even in their difficult circumstances, they are wonderful people who need and appreciate God's love. So we are asked not to just fall in good soil, but to be those who actively make sure that we are in that good soil and living through that good soil. So the parable itself is uh, interesting, isn't it? Because actually you have to kind of work around it. You can't just simply take it straight as it is. And it's also interesting, I think, at this time, the way that Jesus uses uh, the natural world to help us to understand the spiritual world. And we've been bereft, I think, some of us, of communion, which is one of the things where we use the natural world to try and help us understand the spiritual world. But uh, the prayer book I discovered says something that's really quite interesting. The Book of Common Prayer says... If we offer ourselves in penitence and faith, giving thanks for the redemption won by Christ crucified, we truly eat and drink the body and blood of our Saviour Christ. So even though we're not having communion, because we can't in the current situation, we are actually in communion, in communion with one another and in communion with Christ. And we can be fed by what Christ gives to us as we root ourselves in the Bible, in prayer, in Christian service of whatever kind we can. And that is as valuable as receiving the sacrament that we would normally receive. And the teaching of Augustine in the third century speaks about sacrament as an outward sign of an inner spiritual truth. And for me, the importance is not the outward sign, but the inner spiritual truth. Are we? Are we receiving Christ and knowing that he's with us and him enabling us to live as better people? 
if that's true, then we are in communion with him. If it's not, no matter how much we have bread and wine, we're not in communion with him. We're just acting out something on the exterior and not living out the interior. So this picture that Jesus talks about speaks to us in many ways, and it may well have spoken to you in other ways too. And some of them may lead us down an odd alley, which isn't really helpful. We need to discern which are the right alleys. We need to get to know the breadth of Scripture so that we can do that for ourselves. And if we do so, we need to then act it out, live it. Don't become like those who hear the Word of God and think, that's brilliant, and then do nothing with it. Don't become like those who hear the Word of God and quickly grow up and start doing things and then give up. Don't be like those who hear the word of God and think that's great and start growing in it, but then hear other things and go, oh, that's great too, and uh, maybe I should do that, and maybe I should do this, and hear the word of God and allow it to be central, allow it to be powerful, allow it to be effective, and live it out. Focus on making sure that what God wants of us is what we live. And then we will find deep satisfaction and achieve great fulfilment. But we will also be great at being able to help others to know of God's love. We will produce seed, seed that does all sorts of wonderful things. Multiples of seed. That's what the story is about. And that's hopefully what we're able to learn from this. God bless you. Amen. We declare our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our third hymn is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
come now to our prayers of intercession. And we're reminded by St Paul that we do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we let your requests be made known to God. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for our bishops, for all Christian leaders, and for those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. Give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishes of Airmin, Hook and Rawcliffe, for those who live and work here and for those who visit these places. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do not believe, and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. Open their ears to hear your voice, and open their hearts to the knowledge of your love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear, or sickness, especially those named in our hearts. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ, and we rejoice with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Lord of life, hear our prayer, and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final song today is The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free.
God be gracious to us and bless us. May you have discernment to see whom to serve. May you have wisdom to know how to serve. May you have strength to serve as a faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I found it interesting to reflect on how growing and planting ourselves in Christ is such a helpful and powerful way of enabling us to produce fruit. And I hope that as you work on that, you may find it richly rewarding that the nutrients of God may feed through you and you may indeed bear fruit. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and evermore. Amen.